Another blood red sunset and yet another moon face and still another hundred miles to my next resting place. Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon. Within my car, I'm all alone. But feeling good and feeling strong. Knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself. I'm driving. Hey now all, I'm Joey C. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa. This is the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me as always is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey Kelly. Hey Joey. How's it going? Oh, it's going good. It is? Wow, yeah. that's a really excited good. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's April and spring has sprung and my garden is growing. And my husband is happily out staining things so that they look finished. And we've we've got everything in place in the yard. And we're just now doing the little cleanup stuff. Oh, this is wonderful. I love spring. The, I don't love the wetness and no. <laughs> mushiness of spring. But the weather coming back and the sun's coming back and all of this stuff is so wonderful. You know it. <laughs> yeah. So we've, we've even planted our garden already. Ooh. Of course, it was 27 degrees last night, but that's what tarps <laughs> are for, baby. <laughs> oh, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's hardy. They're hardy plants. <laughs> they didn't die. So well, there you, know, you go. You got to do it again tonight, but then it'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> the tarp or the planting? The tarp. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be cold tonight. We are back here to talk more spirit chirpa e stuff. Because that's we've... what we do. Because that's what we do. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> but today we're talking about energetic blocks. Yeah. Yeah. What is that about? What are we talking about here? Well, you know, we do a lot of talk about the emotional side of things, and we do a lot of talk about the magic side of things, but we haven't done a lot of talk about the energetic side of things. And, you know, we're talking about it a little bit in the, in the uh, chakra series, which, which, you know, this is going to relate to a lot when you're trying to make change in your life. Okay. There is the personal growth side, you know, the skill building, the understanding things, seeing things differently, you know, all of that. And then there's the energetic side. And when you have lived your life in one particular mode for so long, your energetics get a little calcified and they turn into blocks. And your blocks are based on the beliefs that you hold and the assumptions, assumptions that you make about life. And when you have limiting beliefs or you have assumptions that are less than healthy, then you have a hard time being successful in life. And that's whether it's in business or your career or in your relationships or in your health and wellness or in your spiritual work. It affects everything equally. And do not imagine that any one issue that is in one aspect of your life is not in every other issue in your life because it is. Okay. When you, when you see something, it's going to be a theme across multiple aspects of your life. So just suck it up and just know that now. Right. So the, the thing I want to talk about today is, is I want to go through and it's a long list and I don't know if we're going to get through all of it in 30 minutes, but if you want, if you want to see more of what the list is, it's, it, I'm working off of my energetics of business page on my website. So if we don't get through all of them, or if you didn't get the chance to take notes, you can always just go over to the energetics of business page and you can find it there. Um, kellysparta.com. What we're going to talk about is the blocks that keep you from success. Now I wrote this page for my energetics business page, the program energetics of business program. Um, but it applies to career as well. So you don't have to have a business for this to be relevant for you. But if you do have a business, listen up because it's super relevant for you. Right. And so the pieces that are, are in there, let me, I just want to go through and, and talk about the different aspects 
And this is, these are symptoms of having unprocessed blocks to success. Okay. So the first one is feeling drained. And what, what I mean by that is that you're giving away all of your energy to your clients. If you're running a business or to your, your job, if you're not, and you have nothing left to live your own life. Okay. This is actually a block in the third chakra. And it's about knowing your own value and about feeling like you are enough. So it can come from the heart chakra as well, but most often it's in the, in the third chakra in the solar plexus. And it's, it's stories around a lack of, of being okay. Okay. And then the next one is over investing in your client outcomes. Okay. When you are more attached to your client's goals than they are, you have a problem because then if you're the coach and you're more invested in their goal than they are, then when they don't do the work they're supposed to do, you're going to go into manipulation and control instead of into motivation and support. And so it's a shadow side that you, you stand into because your value is determined by whether or not they have an outcome. And that can be really problematic, right? And it, it also can limit your ability to get clients because people who have healthy dynamics will recognize that unhealthy dynamic in you. And I'm going to skip the next couple because they're specifically business. Well, I'm going to skip the panic pivot because that's a business one, but you can see it on the site. The next one is under earning. And this is one I see all the time from people who are from challenged childhoods. Okay. There is this thing that we do, right? Where it says, oh, well, you know, they can. So first off, you get codependent, right? Big surprise. You get codependent with your boss and they can't afford to pay me more or whatever. Or you get codependent with your clients. They can't afford to pay me more or whatever. Uh, you will... Uh, give away your services. You won't charge your boss for extra overtime. You won't charge your clients for extra overtime. You give away too much. Um, as a business owner, you won't prospect or advertise consistently. And the, the uh, employment side of this is you won't ask for a raise when it's due. Um, same thing with not closing enough sales. Same concept for that. And the you'll make just enough money to get by. And if you end up with a surplus, you will have an emergency that comes up that sucks all your surplus away. Okay. That is a consistent dynamic that I see in people who come from challenged childhoods. And it is a worthiness and a good enough issue. And that one is, it's also about permission for you to be happy, right? Because we, we play these little drama games with ourselves that, that are the drama game is, can I pay the rent? Right. <laughs> you know, that's our drama game. Can I pay the rent? So, you know, the fact is that if you decided today that you wanted to, to change your relationship with money, you could and everything would change. Okay. It's just a matter of getting yourself to the point where you decide and you have to decide from a place of power. You can't decide from a place of demanding it of the universe or I'm upset. Right. We talked about that before. All right. Bright and shiny syndrome. <laughs> ooh, 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 squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. That's what this podcast is for. I was just going to say we love the bright and shiny here. We're but... doing the bright and shiny. Yes. But yeah, it's, it's not really good for creating a solid foundation for your life. If you're constantly shifting gears or worse is if you're offering a million different things to people uh, in your business, you know, you're doing, you know, healings and psychic readings and tarot, card, tarot cards and, and um, the restaurant with too big a menu that you can't make exactly. any of it good. Exactly. Reiki, you know, whatever, you know, full moon circles, whatever, right? If you're doing way too many things, for one, people don't know what you do. 
they, they're they like, oh, well, she sort of does the spiritual stuff, right? And I say she because 70% of the people in this world are women. So guys, I apologize. But um, when you don't focus, people don't know how to refer to you either. And so the other piece that happens is that you're spreading your energy really thin. And so this is true whether you have a business or not. If you are are if you have your finger in a lot of different pies, what you're doing is you are spreading your energy so thin that you don't have to be effective. Okay? It is a resistance to success. And so you need to recognize that this this bright shiny syndrome of either, you know, jumping from one thing to the next or trying to do it all at once is a way to keep yourself from being successful. It is in and of itself a resistance. Okay. Next one is resistance to getting help. Okay. It, on the site, it says hiring a team, but the, really what it comes down to is having help. You know, we don't accept help well. Why do we not accept help well? Well, because when we were children, we would ask for help and we either wouldn't get it at all or we would get it in a way that we really didn't want, right? And so we've grown up going, help doesn't come or it's not good help. So why bother asking, okay? And the answer is because it's nice to have help, right? (laughs) That's why, because... When you try and do it all yourself, you run yourself into the ground and you become a martyr and you end up empty on the floor in it and you become a raging lunatic bitch. You know, that's why. Is there a worthiness element to that don't ask for help thing too? There is. Um, there's also a, so, so there's a, a give and take piece here, right? So a lot of times what happens with people from challenged childhoods is that they will in their minds, if they do something for somebody else, it's a 50 cent deposit in the bank account of the emotion for the emotional bank account with the other person. And if they ask for something, they see it as a $50,000 withdrawal from that emotional bank account. Somehow the, what they contribute is not equivalent to what somebody else contributes back because they don't, there's, there's an inequity in their mindset of how that works. So Uh, The first thing I'm going to point out is if that sounds like you, your contributions are equally valuable to the other person's. So let's start with that. But then, so there's a resistance to asking for help because you don't want to drain the bank account. You want it to be there when you need it because you don't ask for help until you get desperate and then you have to have it, which by the way, is a manipulation of the other person. It's not very fair to them. You're better off to ask early and ask often than to wait until you're desperate because then you're literally hemming them into a corner where they have to either drop everything for you or not be your friend, right? So that's one dynamic that you'll see. Um, Another dynamic that happens is the, the givers, right? So if you're a giver and you are the person that everybody comes to, you're everybody else's rock and you're the one who does for everybody else and you never ask for anything. And then when you do ask for something, everybody looks at you like you're nuts and they're not available to you. That is because you have a contract with the the people in your life that says, I will give to you and you will make me feel good about myself. And that is a fair trade. And so when you look at them and say, well, I've given all this to you, they look at you like, yeah, and you got to feel good about yourself. So why are you asking for something from me? Because you've surrounded yourself with takers And takers are not evil people. They're just people who are happy to let you feel good about yourself by taking care of them, right? And you have to recognize that you have created this. And so it's not that people aren't there for you. It's that you have surrounded yourself with takers and you have a contract that says, I get to feel good about myself for giving to you. And so... There is no emotional bank account because the contract is an equal give and take. And so there's nothing to draw from at the end of the day. And so that's another reason. It's a self-reinforcing dynamic that you've set up that says in your childhood, nothing ever, you, you never got the help you needed. And so now you create another dynamic in your life where you won't get the help you need when you need it. Okay. So, so these are dynamics that happen. 
And then there's the universal one, right? Which is we make this contract with the universe that we're going to take care of everyone else. So we make this contract with the world that I'm going to take care of you, except that the world has not made that contract back with you. They don't know that contract exists. And, you know, I, I know we've talked about this before, but it's been probably a couple of years. So yeah, the, the rest of the world does not know that your contract exists. So you need to break the contract because they're not going in, they're not going to honor it. <laughs> so that, that, that's an expectation mismatch, right? The, you know, what you expect of the world and what it expects of you are two totally different things. So, you know, this, this one goes really deep and it, it's huge for people and it creates this, this big challenge. And, you know, in business, it will continue because you'll have a hard time hiring a team. You'll have, or, or even in management, if you're in leadership, right? You'll have a hard time hiring a team. You'll have a hard time managing because you will micromanage the crap out of them, or you will abdicate responsibility and not supervise them at all, one or the other. Um, and you will have trust issues with your team members. And that will engender all kinds of ugliness and hate and discontent in your team. And so, uh, you know, you have to address this issue if you're going to do well in your business or in your career, right? So um, the other piece is not knowing your numbers or tracking your finances, okay? And whether this is your personal finances or your business finances, it doesn't matter. If you're not paying attention to your money, you're not honoring it. And the things that you do, if you don't honor something, it's not going to hang around, right? And so uh, T. Harv Eker in his Millionaire Mind program had a, a really great metaphor that I love. He said that if you if you imagine that your your money is an ice cream cone and you have a single scoop and let's say you lick it too hard and it falls on the floor and it splats and you are now a child looking at the universe and going, I have three scoops. You're the universe being a good parent is going to go, well, how about you see if you can get the one scoop to work first before we give you more. Right. And that's what your finances are, right? They're just like that. It's if you don't pay attention to them, if you do not steward them and shepherd them well, then you don't make space for more to come in. You know, and then you may also have, uh, you know, internal blocks. I, I used to have a block that said, if I don't know what I would do with the money, what do I need it for? Right. It, it was a very real block. And Kathy looked at me one day and, and we were having a conversation and she said, um, you know, what if we made $400 million? And I went, what the hell are we going to do with $400 million? What do I need $400 million for? <laughs> And she said, I know exactly what I'd do with it. I was like, okay, tell me. And she went about telling me this big list. And I'm like, I'm in $400 million. Let's do it. <laughs> right? But, but I didn't know it, it, what, what showed up for me in that conversation was I realized that I had that block. If I didn't know what I would do with it, then I didn't have any reason to have it. You know, it was important to me. And by the way, I didn't get rid of that block. I just started planning better. Okay. Sometimes you don't have to clear blocks to fix the problem. You just have to know that they're there and then accommodate. So, you know, I, I had not thought about anything except eh, I'd like to travel a couple of times a year, but generally I'd like my life. Generally I like my stuff. Yeah. I'd like to travel a little more, maybe have some more clothes. Well, I've now bought a house and we're now looking at building a house and, you know, I want to, travel a lot more. And, you know, I'm just, I'm up leveling my dreams and therefore I'm up leveling my need for cash and therefore the money is coming in. Right. And so you don't necessarily have to clear it if you can work with it. You know, it's like that same thing we talked about where I felt poor when my refrigerator, refrigerator gets is empty. empty. Yeah. Right. So I just buy groceries. <laughs> Well, I do a lot of work to unwind that. Just buy groceries. You, know? you got to have them in the house anyway. So sometimes it's it's a simple solution. You don't have to kill yourself to fix it. You can just be like, yeah, here, cope, right? Some things are 
easier coped with than fixed because they're simple solutions. So, but this is something that you want to pay attention to, right? It's super important to be able to pay attention to and track your finances. And I know a lot of spiritual people are like, well, but the finances just get me down, man. And I'm like, I feel you, but they're going to keep getting you down if you don't pay attention. That's the nature of the beast. If you have control over them, then you are better able to make them work for you. Well, it's, it's a matter of where is your power in that dynamic. Do you hold your power and manage your finances or do you abdicate your power and throw your ice cream cone on the floor? You know, that's really what it comes down to. And if you're ignoring your finances, then your ice cream cone is slowly melting all over your hands. Just saying. Now I want ice cream, Kelly. Thanks. I know. I'm, I'm like, I'm craving cake today. So I was trying to shift it to ice cream because I actually have ice cream in the house. So see, coping. <laughs> Now the rest of us want ice cream and none of us have it. So now uh -huh. we're all sorry looking at your ice cream cone on the floor and thinking, <laughs> it's not that dirty. <laughs> Five second rule. <laughs> it also depends on whether or not you have pets because, you know, pet hair and the ice cream is not good. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you know that I've tried that in order to, to know that that's true. Yeah, anybody who has pets has tried that as well. So that's yeah, not a big surprise. Really not a big surprise. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so, uh, you know, the next thing is overworking, being a martyr, right? And, you know, I love the people, my, my phrase all the time was I get more done in a day than most people get done in a week. And I was, I was right. I did. I did. I worked my ass off. I worked my, I literally worked myself to death. And when you do that, you are trying to prove your value by overachieving. And I've got news for you. No matter how perfect you are, no matter how much you do, you are completely replaceable in any sort of business environment. And if you don't believe me, just have a coworker die and you'll see how fast that happens. Well, let's not do that. But if it were to happen, you or somebody say, quits. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Somebody with dies. Somebody quits. <laughs> yes. You're replaceable and it doesn't matter how much you do. And this is the thing. And this is another piece of under earning, by the way, is that there is this delusion that we hold that says, if we work hard enough and we do enough, then we will be noticed and we will be promoted. And it is not about how hard you work and what you do. It is about who you know and who you convinced of your value. And if you can't convince yourself of your own value, you're going to have a hard time convincing other people of it. And you can work hard until the cows come home and you will still never make it onto an executive path. It's, it's the executive path isn't about hard work work. It's about your ability to lead. It's about your ability to schmooze. It's about your ability to make things happen. And that is not work. That is people skills. Okay. So there's that now inability to commit. And this one goes along with analysis paralysis too just so you know, an inability to commit is if you're in your business, it's, it's like having an on again, off again, romance with your business. Okay. If you're not in a business, then it could just be having an on again, off again, romance and you're not committing to the relationship, right? It's, it's, you're just not committing to the process. You're, you're kind of dabbling you're like, oh, I think I want to do this. Oh, I'm not really sure. Oh, but maybe. Oh, well, maybe if the universe lines up behind it and showers me with love and money, then maybe I will do this. I'm going to test the waters. I got to tell you, if you're not committed, if you put out not committed vibes, the universe is going to give you back not committed money. <laughs> That's just how that works. <laughs> So you need to be committed. You need to decide where you're going and then tell the universe what you want. And until you can do that, the universe is going to be sitting there going, okay, any day now, yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. What would you like? 
and you're going, um, um, it's like sitting at the ice cream counter with 32, 31 flavors, right? And going, I think I want pistachio. No, Rocky Road. No, no, no. Lemon sorbet. Yeah, no. Uh, can I have five? <laughs> and then you end up with cauliflower ice cream and nobody's happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or the universe looks at you and goes, how about cake? <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're continuing with our diabetic metaphors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, another one is imposter syndrome. And we hear about this a lot in business, right? Um, in, in executive leadership stuff and things like that, where people feel like an imposter. They feel like a fraud. This, again, is a value and a not good enough thing. You know, you have not internalized your sense of value. You don't see yourself as good enough. You're constantly trying to be enough so that somebody will love you. And let me be clear. That's what you're looking for is love, not approval, although pr approval is a form of love, right? You, you think you want your boss's approval, but what you actually want is your boss's love because you're trying to get your parents' love through your boss, through your authority figure. That's what this is about. So uh, that is a regular issue that I see a lot with people who are trying to be successful. And then another one and I think we'll just call this one good for the, for the show, but there's fear of losing your freedom. Okay. Now this one goes along with commitment, right? Because, you know, part of commitment is you have to decide and dis the word decide means literally to cut off all other options. And so to commit to something, you must cut off all the other options and deal with the FOMO that comes from that. Right. Because that's why people don't decide is they they've got FOMO. They're like, oh, but what if what if what if it's like, you know what? What if this is the right path after all? You know, <laughs> you got to pick one. Well, you don't, but you're not going anywhere until you do. So but there's also this fear of of loss of freedom. And this one is actually a really unique one because it is not about freedom so much as it is about escape. And when you are in fear of a loss of your freedom, what you're really saying is I found my environment to be so toxic that I needed to escape and I didn't have any way to do it. And you're probably also saying I had a parent who used to suck the energy and the life out of me and I couldn't get away. And so now I want the ability to step out the door at any second I want because I never want to have that happen again. Right. And that fear of, of, of loss of freedom or fear of being stuck or trapped is a big motivator for people not to commit even to something that they actually want. Okay. And so, you know, there are ways to work around that as well. You can go at that one head on and, and really unwind it, or you can do things like limit the amount of appointments that you have in a day that you're willing to take, or, you know, give yourself absolute and utter permission to cancel your entire day if you feel like it, you know? Um, so there's, there's ways to, to deal with that one, but it is definitely a big one. Uh, it's cost me that one, that one was a big one big one of mine for a long time. And it cost me probably $80,000 in one year alone because I walked away from a big contract because I had to be done. And I was like, I'm out. <laughs> and I was like, and I didn't have, I didn't have, I didn't have 80 grand to lose. You know? <laughs> I was just like, I don't care if I have to live on the street. I'm not staying here. You know, <laughs> it's just like, okay. So not to say that I should have stayed necessarily, but there were better ways to do it that, that had I not been struggling with that, I probably could have salvaged some of the cash, but you know, these are the things that we do, right? We, we, we are run by them until we recognize them. And then we take, when we take responsibility for them, then we have the ability to, to change things. And so I know that this has been sort of a 
oh holy shit look at all the crap that's that's true um episode but awareness is the first step to change if you are not aware that these issues are yours there's no way you're going to be able to change them right so the there's value in defining them because now you know what you're dealing with and you know what to look for it's like right? giving it a name you you take the power away from it exactly and you know when you're dealing with these issues, I mean, they, they come from a bunch of different chakras. I mean, they're all over the place in the chakra system, you know, for everything from fear of your own power to not feeling good enough to feeling unlovable to, you know, wanting to, to, to be invisible to, you know, there's all sorts of stuff and, and they generate all of these blocks to your success. And so, when you're doing this work, you want to be clear what your block is. And that's one of the benefits of doing an energy scan. Um, and if you're running a business, you want to make sure that you are clear in your business, because especially if you're a solopreneur, you know, you, your energy is your business's energy. And, you know, if you've got a problem and a block, your business has got the same one because you are the business. And so that's what the energetics of business is for. Right. So, you know, we walk you through all of this stuff. Yeah, well, and you mentioned these these blocks you just talked about today. They are on your website on that energetics of business page. Yes. Yeah. So they're all tied to that. Absolutely. And, um, you know, we've, we've talked about the energy scans on here before there is actually a business energy scan that you get as part of the energetics of business that goes into exactly how your internal blocks are manifesting blocks in your business. Excellent. Very, yeah. very cool. It's a great way to jumpstart and really turbocharge your process. There's a lot here. And for folks who are either recognizing these blocks who are doing this journey, looking to start some a way for this to be uh, income for them. All of these are important. And you can, as Kelly said, get more information on kellysparta.com. But there's also that energetics course, right? That's available. Yeah. So, the energetics of business. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on here, folks. Get over to kellysparta.com. Check out the, the detail there and do that. Also, by the way, we haven't talked about this directly in a little bit, but get on to the Facebook and come and join us in the Kelly Sparta uh, Spirit Tripper by Kelly Sparta Facebook group. Get in there. Um, there's lots of uh, great conversations and things that go on in there. You definitely want to check it out and let us know what you think of the episodes. And with letting us know what you think of the episodes, why don't you subscribe and rate the podcast? Because that helps us in everything we're doing to bring the content to you and make sure that it's the content you're looking for. And the better, uh, the, excuse me, the better. Well, that might have been a little <laughs> subliminal, but the, the more... <laughs> The more ratings that we get and the more um, people are talking about it. The better the ratings it, we get. The better the ratings <laughs> we get. Uh, the more it gets out to others. And that's and that's really what we're trying to do is make sure that Kelly's message is reaching everybody that needs to hear it. And that's a great way for you to help us do that. All right. That's all that I'm going to ramble about there. Did you have anything <laughs> else you want to say? Maybe a Kellyism before we wrap up? Oh, a Kellyism, a Kellyism. Um, before you decide... The, the block that you have too many blocks to be successful. I want to say this. When we do these scans, we generally find, you know, 12 to 15 blocks, right? And people are like, oh my God, I have so many blocks. I suck, right? But it's not. It's usually just, you know, between one and three themes that are causing all the blocks. Mm. So don't let this get you down. If, if I went through this list and you were like, oh, I've got that. Oh, I've got that. Oh, I've got that. Don't let it get you down. Okay. It's usually between one and three themes. It's not that much of a heart attack. You are not, you're not lost, <laughs> right? It, we all have blocks at all times and we're all working our way through them. If you ever are worried about whether or not you're done with your blocks, here's a simple test stolen from Richard Bach. <laughs> if you're still here, you're not done. It's a good test. It's a good <laughs> test. <laughs> 
<laughs> all right. Well, that is all that we have for this week. But be sure to join us next time as Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I am Joey C. here with Kelly Sparta, and you are listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone. Bye. Each mile I travel over 13,000 miles. Spirit Trippa is the sole property of Kelly Sparta Enterprises and is distributed under a Creative Commons BY-NC-ND 4.0 license. For more information about this licensing, please go to www.creativecommons.org. Any requests for deviations to this licensing should be sent to kelly at kellysparta.com. To sign up for or get more information on the programs, offerings, and services referenced in this episode, please go to www.kellysparta.com. This episode.